It can be said, it is not the mountain we conquer, but ourselves. Only a select few will ever get to experience the life of a champion. It requires a life of monotony. Train, eat, sleep, repeat. Until one day, no one can stop you. Gordon Ryan has been on the daily grind for many years in pursuit of perfection. The type of dominance that Gordon has cultivated has rarely been seen in any competitive sport. Under the watchful eye of John Danaher, the two have single-handedly transformed the sport of submission grappling. For the past five years, Gordon has dominated anyone who dared challenge him. His rise from a virtual unknown to unrivaled best has been unprecedented. But just as he reached his peak, another challenge emerged. A challenge that Gordon had been chasing since he was just a purple belt. A chance to meet the greatest ADCC champion of all time. Andre In the beginning, it wasn't about fame or fortune for Andre Galvao. It was about the love of jiu-jitsu. And that love of the game has brought the six-time ADCC champion to the sunny shores of San Diego, California. His entire life, Andre Galvao has dreamed of something bigger, dreamed of creating a legacy. Hungry for something greater than what fate had offered. The tatami provided a path to something more where Andre has built an empire and a reputation that is unmatched. Now, the veteran champion is being pulled back into the spotlight for one more ultimate test. And when the lights come up in Las Vegas, Nevada, he will be ready to shock the world again and claim his throne one final time. This is the tale of the greatest super fight in grappling history. A tale with many twists and turns. A story of sacrifice and determination, faith and legacy, honor and destiny. This is the story of Andre Galvao versus Gordon Ryan. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be epic. We're gonna see Gordon Ryan break some ankles. I think Galvao's gonna win. History, right? Man, it's gonna be a great event. I'm super excited to see what happens. We are here, of course, for the 2019 ADCC World Championship, the most prestigious tournament in all of submission grappling. These brackets are just ridiculous. Each matchup in each bracket is essentially a super fight. The ADCC World Championships, a place where legends are made. The world's best grapplers gather together for an unprecedented weekend in combat sports. This year, the Super Bowl event is coming to Las Vegas, Nevada. Who wouldn't want to compete in Las Vegas? It's the fight capital of the world. All the biggest UFCs are here. The build up to ADCC is just gonna keep building up. And this year, the main event is a match that only happens once in a lifetime. And who knows, I didn't get the opportunity to ask Andre Galvao if he would defend his belt one more time. I know there was talk about retirement, but uh, I know Gordon Ryan's been calling him out for a long time. Let me show you here in the backyard. Uh, this is uh, our backyard to have a canyon outside. 
it's kind of like cool like, to meditate sometimes here, you know. Um, during the camp, I do like the pool, you know, cold and then hot and jacuzzi. So the camp is about to start. Yeah, we didn't start like really hard yet, but yeah, it's coming next week, Monday. Monday we start moving. So it's right up there, like you can't see, but you see? You wanna go in? <laughs> you can go in there? Yeah, it's amazing. This is the calm before the storm. Over the next several months, Andre Galvao will transform himself into one of the most feared grapplers ever to walk the earth. We have like some, uh, some guys that came here, Akaina, Andy. Mercy. <laughs> but for now, this is Andre's prized possession, a treehouse. Yeah, so I remember my daughter, they're asking, oh, we want a treehouse, we want a treehouse. And I'm like, okay. And then I start like going to YouTube and I put like treehouse, how to build a treehouse and things like that. <laughs> We had like a perfect tree. And then like we, we start building the, this platform first. It was like a, a great experience you know, in my life. But uh, I don't have any like carpenter in, in the family, you know? <laughs> the experience that I had like just, just like with Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> if you're black belt Jiu-Jitsu, you can do anything, right? This is a garage. The, the gym, you know? This is where uh, this is where I work out. This is uh, Brad. He fights UFC. Then uh, I have Rogero Camões, Angelica. Where's that design? Yeah, that design is at the top. It's a obrigado. It's a fancy guy, you know. What's going on here with the, all these black belts over here? It's like a surfboard, you know. Like you, some days I could feel like, oh, today I feel like old school. I go old school, you know. Oh, today I feel. Like a uh, new school, I go new school. Oh, today I feel like, oh, I need a light belt. I got a light belt. So, and then people like give me as a gift and then I just keep right here. It's all my belts and Angelica's. You guys gotta go, so I gotta close the door. Mike, I'm on my way, okay? Just to let you know, I'll be there like, uh, give me five minutes, five to 10 minutes. See you. Yeah, right now the focus is uh, the super fight. I told one championship that to wait for me to fight my fight first, the super fight, then I go back and do the MMA class. So I prefer to focus in one goal, and the goal is to fight the ADCC. Here we go. Water, water. Good, bro. Sorry about the time. No worries. I brought you a special caffeine. Nitro cold brew. Thanks, brother. All the last camps we did hot coffee, this camp we're doing nitro. <laughs> Atos Jiu-Jitsu has become legendary for forging champions. For years, Andre Galvao has been sharpening his sword and winning countless ADCC titles with his team, starting right here on these mats. I feel like Jiu-Jitsu is just like life, you know? It's like one piece where, you know, it's one fight where it doesn't stop, you know? It's like, in life we scramble a lot too, you know? Life is like a fight. I always try to evolve, and the fight is jujitsu. So that's why I love jujitsu. The Autos ADCC camp is legendary. It's hard work. It's sweaty. It's pretty good. I feel good. Um, it's like the body is kind of like adapting still. I know, like until the end of the camp, I, I start feeling better and better and better. For the next three months, every single day, five days a week, we're going to be doing a specific drill set. We just think that these are the positions that are going to be most crucial for him getting his victory against Gordon. Because Gordon's a very dangerous opponent, so we got to be smart. we got to be extremely uh, precise with our gripping, so we're training that. Whatever he's on the mat is reflects of his personality overall. If he set a goal, he gives himself no way out. He'll do everything to win. He won't accept losing. <laughs> He's ready to take this again. So when the when the master becomes a student, that's when scary things happen. So you guys will see. I feel like I still building my legacy, you know? I still doing it. We didn't stop yet. You know, I still alive. I still working, you know. So it's just a beginning, you know, it's just the beginning of uh, many things that will will happen still. 
The sport of submission grappling has never seen a champion quite like Andre Galvao. I am six-time AGCC champion. I'm a silver medalist in 2009. I won four times the super fight. Double gold in 2011. Your first gold medal in ADCC. Mm -hmm. Great. I trained really, really hard for this tournament. I defeat Braulio by submission. It was the first time ever that somebody won the super fight by submission. It was a incredible moment in my life. And then um, in 2015, I defeat Cyborg. And it was a crazy fight. Like I just like pass over like Cyborg, like boom, took him down and all that. And then after that, 2017 against uh, Claudio Calazans, and everybody was like, oh, it's, it's not gonna be a fight, it's gonna be a fight because they're friends and all that. But then you guys saw, we like tried to kill each other. And then I won by, I think like 13 or 15 points. And then after that, I fought Felipe Pena in 2019. Galval Pena, look at this, John Williams, Galval taking it to Felipe Pena right away. Last few seconds of the match, and time has expired. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see, like right there, like there's the, the frame. It was incredible because it was the day of my birthday. All my students were there, you know, my family. It was an incredible moment in my life. I would say like it was, Supernatural, you know, like it was incredible. Andre Galvao is your super fight champion. I told everyone that that would be my last fight, you know, in ADCC. But then I say, no, I'll fight one more. And then um, I'll fight uh, against Gordon because it's a fight that everyone wants to watch. And I feel, I feel like a lot of desire to fight, you know, a lot of willing power of will to fight this fight in Las Vegas and it's gonna be one of the biggest ADCC events ever and I'm really excited to to be out there and showcase my my jiu-jitsu and and fight really hard for not only for myself but for everyone you know so take this as a lesson guys keep training keep grinding keep believing and you will achieve thank you In the hills of Central Texas, Gordon Ryan is finding the balance between life's calmer moments and his relentless pursuit of dominance on the grappling mats. Months away from the biggest match of his life, Gordon isn't phased by the buildup. This is where Gordon thrives. These swords up here, which is uh, the top katana is the uh uh, it's something that John gave me. He gave me that after I won 2017 ADCC. Um, and it's, it's designed specifically to cut the heads off horses in battle. It's made by one of Japan's best knife makers, I forget, or swordsmiths. Uh, this is just a crappy Naga sword that I won uh, when I was like 15 or 16, that I had this whole time that I kept up there. Uh, this is another crappy Grappler's Quest sword that I won around the same time when I was like 15. And this one is an ultra sharp Kukri that uh, John gave me that is actually super sharp and can cut off arms and legs. So this, the top and the bottom one are actual not actual swords and the, these ones are just prizes. But I have like all these, uh, all these knives floating around here. Got those, I got these floating around up here. I have a couple up here, I have those over there. And then I have a bunch of, I mostly IBG Jeff medals in the middle because the ADCC the three ADCC medals and the ADCC trophy are in the garage in the gym. Uh, we have the ADCC uh, best fighter uh, trophy here, uh, 2017 gold medal, double gold medal from 2019. We have the ADCC uh, trophy from 2017. Uh, and then a couple other things. Uh, we have a New Jersey State Martial Arts Hall of Fame uh, plaque that I got in 2019. And then uh, my pathetic uh, 2014 runner-up uh, ADCC Trials medal because I lost to Mike Perez in the finals. 
um, by three points. So I have that over here hidden away in the corner so no one, so no one sees. I'm basically unbeaten in the last 50 or 55 matches. Um, I've beaten everybody from early 2018 until current date pretty convincingly. Dangerous pressure on the shoulder. There it is. There's the finish. The last time I lost was to Vinny Magalesh shortly after 2017 ADCC. And since then, I've been unbeaten. Oh, and here, he heel hook, heel hook. A display of skill from the number one pound for pound Nogi grappler in the world. It's been non-competitive. I'm going out and calling submissions against ranked guys. Gordon Gordon's has an gift. envelope in his hands. Gordon has just placed an envelope on my table with the words, open me after. Look at this, got a triangle attack here. Slightly off that the side, and there is the finish. Gordon Ryan with the submission. There it is, a triangle with the words, who's next? You've seen guys who are very good at winning. You've seen Andre, you've seen Bushesha go out and win world titles, but you haven't seen someone as dominant as far as submissions as me since Hodger. Everything you see on social media is 100% true and he's a complete fucking asshole. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, no, he's, um, uh, he's a very nice kid. You gotta remember the context in which I see people is always a gym context, which is a very practical, everyday kind of context where you go in, you work on problems and you try to solve them together and you, you work as a, as a team against a set of problems that you're trying to explore. The culture that I try to build in the room is always the culture of the quiet professional who just identifies problems very clearly and is prepared to, to solve them one problem at a time over time, making small incremental progress every day until you achieve something great. Sometimes I wonder if Gordon's social media image is almost like a, a reaction to the very mundane life that he lives day to day, because all of our lives are fairly mundane. They're lives of routine. You're never going to achieve anything great in this life unless you can devote yourself for a considerable period of time to a, a routine which builds skills that make you great in whatever domain you've decided to, to work within. I think if I put my mind to a lot of things, I could be the best in the world at it. I don't think that it's just jujitsu where I can only do jujitsu. Uh, just my work ethic alone, I think, will put me ahead of most people because most people are just inherently lazy. And I think that, uh, just working hard at something else that I enjoyed um, would allow me to become, I don't know if I would become as good at it as I am in Jiu-Jitsu, but I can definitely become better than, than most people. In 2019, Gordon Ryan cemented his place as an elite ADCC champion. With six out of eight submissions, he became the first American to win the absolute since Dean Lister. Going up against legends of the sport, he looked unstoppable. So 2019 was good. Um, I was happy with it, but not satisfied. I got six of eight submissions. You know, I went out and the only two people I didn't submit was Lucas Barboza and Bouchesha. Marcus Almeida, Bouchesha, Gordon Ryan, the two greatest jiu-jitsu competitors outside of Andre Galvan right now. We came out, shot, and I pulled guard. And then um, he was coming forward trying to pass. And I hit him with our patented uh, shoulder crunch Shimagashi. Got a very nice sweep from here. There it goes. Oh, there it is. Wow! And then for the next 28 minutes, he was very reluctant to engage and like basically didn't do anything. And in the last like minute, he tried to really ramp it up and then fell back for a heel hook. Shesha now, hook. you know what, saying, let's screw it. Let's do a heel hook. <laughs> <laughs> He was using it as a tactic to appear like he wasn't stalling, so he went for a heel hook. And in the middle of the match, Gordon just looked at me like, are you fucking kidding me, bro? He's really got to do something if he wants this match. You, you, you see at that point, that's an athlete who's looking at his opponent. He's one of the greatest of all time and saying, there's nothing you can do to hurt me. Gordon Ryan is your 2019 ADCC Openweight World Champion. I won and I was like mad that I didn't get a submission and I was kind of like all bummed out and I was ready to walk off the mat and then I see Andre like storming onto the mat like he's all jacked and uh, he got the six time hat on and the belt over his shoulder and I was like oh I guess we're doing face off. So he came in and we did a face off. Gordon Ryan, the new king of ABCC against the lion Andre Galvao. Oh my gosh. How, can, how can that not happen? <laughs> it's gotta happen. We were both smiling at each other and I remember Andre just saying, I'm just happy right now. 
And like he wasn't talking shit, he was just like, he just said, I'm just happy right now. And I was like, yeah, I'm happy too. <laughs> and then uh, you know, we both started laughing, we congratulated one another, and then we kind of shook hands, and then that was the face-off. Do you remember when you first heard about Gordon Ryan, when you first found out who this guy was? The first time? Mm. I think the first time was when uh, when uh, he fought the trials against uh, Perez, one of my students, and then he lost the trials. And then after that, uh, he started using social media to kind of like build his name and start challenging people. Again, no time limit. Keenan in the black and white rash guard. Gordon all black. Looking for outside heel hook. Oh, time. Gordon Bryant! Gordon Bryant inside heel hook! When he uh, won the fight against Keenan, you know, no time limit. And that's when everybody started like, oh, who's this guy, you know? And then like his name started popping up. And that's how I, I heard about him. What a super fight, man. That was amazing. Sorry, I suck. It took so long. <laughs> <laughs> he has like that type of personality where uh, he likes to go on social media and try to like uh, cause drama, you know, like and start getting attention like that. The first one to do it really well was like Cassius Clay. Nowadays we saw like Chel Sonny and then Conor McGregor doing MMA. But in Jiu-Jitsu we never had someone like that and then Gordon pop up and start like, I think he, he thought about it and he's like, oh, I think this is a nice way for me to promote myself. And then he did it really well. So I've been trying to compete against Andre since 2016. Um, we got back and forth into a little uh, argument on Facebook and I started arguing with his wife, Angelica. Gordon was a younger competitor. He was already calling Andre out for a fight. And I remember saying like, okay, win ATC, win Absolute, make your way to the super fight and we'll fight. And he did. Many times I went to, I went to New York. He, he texted me, hey, let's train, you know, this and that. You know, it was kind of like, like, no, unfortunately I can't because I'm, I'm leaving today and all that, you know, so, and then, the talk starts and then I was like, okay, let me promote it, you know? But then like, uh, later on it started getting really personal, like, you know, like he was like being really aggressive and I didn't understand why. And it seems like he, was, he wasn't trying to help to promote this sport, but I felt like he was trying to hurt my reputation, you know, and my, my character and all that. And, and then I, I felt like I went to a trap. Thank you guys. It's an interesting game, uh, and there's a reason why I do it. These guys, I think, really take it seriously, and it just gets to them, and it eats at them, and it eats at them. And I think uh, they're just too emotional. Like, they let everything I say get to them because of the social media antics that I have. But uh, another big reason that I do it is because there are many ways to beat people. Those ways travel far beyond just using techniques and tactics on the map. You can beat many people with many different things um, that go far beyond jiu-jitsu. And uh, I think that I'm the best in the world at, at exploiting that. Oh, man, the bad day for the haters today. <laughs> you know, Gordon has an abrasive personality on social media. Andre is much more old-fashioned. So their, their social personalities clash. Combat athletes in general don't handle conflict particularly well. They don't like to back down or talk. They'd rather settle things uh, on, on the mat. That kind of general culture builds rivalries. And uh, that's what happened in this case. You had someone who was already great versus someone who was becoming great. Making his way to the mat out of the red corner. Representing Denaho Death Squad. Unbeaten in his last 37 matches. You know him as the King, Gordon Ryan! There is a reason that he's the number one pound for pound grappler in the world. Gordo Jimenez ranked in the middleweight division. This is the first time that he's going to be going up against Gordon in a competitive environment. However, it's not the first time that he's going to be going up against an ADCC medalist. Gordon, look at this. Already in a very dangerous position here. That's extended, that's very much arm reverse. Literals through, rolling through. That arm is locked out and here is the finish. 
gets the upper, Gordon Ryan with the submission. So I fight Roberto, I post on Instagram that I'm gonna hit a mounted armbar on him. I go out, I finish him in a mounted armbar. Craig goes out, he smokes Ronaldo. Craig had fought against one of Andre's students. Customarily at the end of the match, we always go over and shake the coach's hand and the athlete's hand after a match. And uh, I went over to shake Andre's hand and I didn't realize, because it's rather dark, and I went over to shake Andre's hand, I turned away and I didn't realize that Andre had flipped off Gordon when he went to shake hands. I just laugh it off, I'm like, okay, whatever. So I, I walk away and I go to do my interview and I walk out um, from behind the curtains and Andre's there with, uh, <clears throat> with his phone and he starts cursing at me and I just start, I just laugh it off. And I'm like, this is like kind of uncharacteristic of Andre, especially now because there's no cameras around. Like he didn't think that flow was recording. I was completely unaware that there had been some kind of animosity earlier in the evening. So when Gordon finished his match, I was talking to Eddie Bravo. Suddenly Eddie's eyes just 100% look over my shoulder. He's like, oh shit, dude. I walk from the backstage area into the warm-up area where now there's tons of lights and there's tons of people. I think it was just him going back and forth with me and losing every battle on social media just got to him so bad. Because originally he was like kind of the, one of the guys who got it, like, oh, we're trying to sell a show, we're trying to sell a fight. And, uh, you know, he would go back and he was kind of with it. Like, you know, we, we discussed, he was like, oh, he's like, I know what you're doing on social media, like, let's try to talk some shit and make a fight. But it must have been like some point where it just flipped for him, where he just couldn't handle it anymore and he took it seriously. You know, then he was like really invested in doing it. So I went to go shake his hand, then he wasn't playing the game anymore. Then after, you know, I kind of laughed that off and then he was like cursing at me and I laughed that off and then he like rolled up on me and pushed me. So I was like, okay, like I'm not gonna just not do anything again. So then I was like, well, let's, we're gonna fight. And then he just didn't fight. So that's, that's what happened. Man, to be honest, I thank God for, for that, you know, because uh, it could be worse. It could be worse. And before that happened, I remember, like, um, you know, like, maybe those who have a relationship with God will understand what I say. You know, you know when you are in the wrong way. You know when you, like, step out of the path. Before the incident, like, God spoke to me, hey, careful, you're gonna lose everything you built. I thought so I was just like, no. Like what I what I've built, like it's it's huge, you know, it's big, it's hard to like lose. Then no no, be careful. And I feel like all this like that was happening, pandemic came and stress drove me to this like dark side. I was getting intoxicated by social media, I was like hours and hours on my phone. And I was like, man, what I'm doing myself, you know? As you can see, words were being exchanged. The Galvao looking very fired up, but Gordon, of course, full of adrenaline after the match, having just competed, emotions are high. And then like, 
all that happened, I was in a dark moment. You can see like, the, like even my look. And I was trying to just like, just like putting him on his place, you know, but you know, at the same time in a, in a aggressive way, you know. And then he tried to defend himself. And I, at the moment, that was when I felt like, now it's time for you to lose everything you built. <laughs> because if, uh, if I react, like the worst thing could happen, who knows? I have a big responsibility, you know, as a, as a man of God, as a father, as a husband, as a leader, you know? Everything happens for a reason, you know? Now I feel like that helped me to become a better, better person. I forgive him for, for what he did. And when you forgive someone, you, you heal. And if he doesn't wanna, if he decides to not forgive me for what I did, it's on him, you know? It's out of me, you know? And I'll have the opportunity to be with him in front of him, you know? In a super fight, you know? Or maybe before, or maybe after. And that opportunity will, will be unique. I'm glad that he forgives me. If anything, I should be forgiving him because he's the one who attacked me. <laughs> I'm just, I was just walking to do my interview. Conflict is it's always inevitable. They only make one gold medal, but there's many people fighting for it, so there's going to be conflict. The important thing is that at the end of the day, both are good people, and I, I truly believe that. Both of them are immensely talented people. The right thing to focus on is what's going to happen when they meet each other in their domain, which is sport jiu-jitsu under ADCC rules rather than peripheral things like a slap or a verbal altercation. Back in San Diego, Andre reflects on what it means to be a leader. What's up? The legend. How you doing, brother? Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Big fan, big fan. Thank you, man. Yeah. It's not about focusing on the past, but looking forward to the future. I think I inspire a lot of people. I motivate a lot of people just the way I am. When they think about Andre Govone, I think I, I inspire them. I'm not the perfect one, right? I'm not a perfect person. I make mistakes. And I'm humble enough to recognize my failures, my mistakes, and try to fix them. So I think this is inspiring, you know? I think this can change people's life for sure. ADCC, you gotta be prepared mentally, physically, spiritually. It's, it's not easy. And it requires a lot of uh, mindset. A lot of uh, mental, strength. Everybody wants to watch this fight because what happened? People love drama. So I'll be there, fresh. The best guy that day is gonna win. But I have to lose. I have nothing to lose, you know. I, I have not, nothing to prove. Gord is just an athlete. He's the champion and he's the younger guy. He needs to come up and, and do his best, you know. I think there's more pressure on that side. There's not much pressure on my side. Well, I mean, once the incident happened, I knew Andre's not going to fight. Like, even if Andre shows up to ADCC, he's not coming in prepared to win that fight. Like, he's beaten already. That has, like, a lasting impact. Like, you can't just get smacked by a dude and not do anything. And then you just show up and, and compete against him. Like, I don't care if it's two years, three years, five years later. Like, Andre's lost that match a, a long time ago. You've got the guy who's the greatest super fight champion, incontestably, of all time, coming up against the guy who's the greatest open weight and weight division ADC champion of all time. I'm a fucking fast man. Then you add in the drama, and it's got some mass appeal. Four time super fight champion. People will say that if Andre were to beat me, that he's the greatest nogi grappler of all time, I still have a ton more time to just blow every one of his records out of the water, which the only record he has on me now is total ADCC wins because I just haven't competed at ADCC that much. I am capable to 
break my own record and come back with the seventh title. It's a battle against myself. It's me versus me. It's just a blessing to be there and I can't wait. You know, I'm very excited. I will be technically better, tactically better. I will be much isometrically stronger. There's not many advantages Andre's gonna have going into this match. And the ones that he does have aren't really gonna help him. I believe like he's gonna try to surprise me and I will try to surprise him as well. It's gonna be a great fight. When I step on the on the mat on the arena, I go to do my best. Of all the great ADCC athletes, Andre Galvan has proven to be the best at mastering the intricacies of the ADCC rule set and using it to win. I love to fight, you know, this is what I chose. We go out there to get back with the title and bring the title back to San Diego, California again. It's going to be me going out, pushing the action and submitting Andre for the win. To close this chapter with a victory would be just beautiful. It's probably going to be the biggest weekend for combat sports in history. After what people saw for 2019, I'm going to make this an event that no one can top. Once in a generation, a match comes along that has the potential to change the landscape of the sport forever. This is the story of two men permanently intertwined, destined to collide. Two men who couldn't be more different. Two champions with still so much more to prove in a match that will showcase the very best grappling has to offer. For Andre Galvao, a lifetime of training and preparation has led him here. For Gordon Ryan, the path to greatness lies ahead. On September 18th, the unprecedented match goes down in Las Vegas, Nevada. We will find out what happens when an immovable object meets an unstoppable force. We will find out once and for all, who's the greatest of all time. Watch history unfold right here on flowgrappling.com.